Good afternoon, Grizzly Nation, and welcome back to Grizzly News. My name is Denicia Williams. And I am Josh Beaton. If you have not been paying attention to the NFL, we suggest that now is the time to begin. We are one game away from the big game, the Super Bowl, and our very own Atlanta Falcons have gotten far into the playoffs. We are currently recording before the NFC Championships, but we hope that the Falcons have won this past Sunday and are going to the Super Bowl to make Atlanta proud. Go Falcons! And now we are joined with our sports correspondent, Kennedy Lucas, for our local Grizzly News Sports. Thanks for being here, Kennedy. Thank you for having me on the show. This week is very special because GGC Tennis will go against Kennesaw State this Saturday around noon, so tune in for that. Of course, I have a bit of special announcements for all of you guys out there. GGC Athletics and Res Life will be hosting a leadoff luncheon in Grizzly Dining on Wednesday, January 25th at 12 o'clock. Come on out, see how Grizzlies Live do it, and have lots of fun with our athletes. Perfect. Well, thank you for being here, Kennedy. Thank you. In other news, the Georgia Gwinnett College game room opened last week and is now open for all students. Head over there between classes or if you just need to relax a bit. With the beginning of a new year comes new television shows to binge. Some of my personal favorites that are currently on Netflix, The 100 and The Magicians, are beginning new seasons in the coming weeks. Also, the highly anticipated Lemony Snickets, a series of unfortunate events, was made available to watch this, this month on Netflix. Now over to Matthew for our local weather this week. Hello everyone. Today we are expecting some high to be in the high 50s at the beginning of the week. However, we're going to be coming back to the 50s and the 60s and low 30s, so the cold weather might be creeping up back up on us again. But we are still expecting warm weather. You know, it won't be in the 70s that much. But keep strong, Grizzlies. Thanks, Matthew. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us to look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us, all of us, to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. This past weekend, Representative John Lewis, during an interview with NBC's Chuck Todd, spoke about his decision to not attend Trump's inauguration. He also mentioned that President-elect Trump is not a legitimate president, to which our very own Gwinnett Commissioner, Tommy Hunter, responded by calling Representative Lewis a racist pig. He is now in hot water, as many are calling for him to resign as commissioner. So we have Aaron here, and he's talking about Trump's inauguration. So, so Aaron, um, first of all, who is who is performing at the inauguration? Who do you know is, um, is performing at the inauguration? Well, let's first talk about the festivities that are going to happen beforehand at the Make America Great Again welcome celebration. That's going to happen at the Lincoln Memorial. Mm -hmm. Person who'll be performing that would be Toby Keith. He will be the first person. He'll be the headliner of this event. There will also be um, Sam Moore, the piano guys, which of course are pretty well known, and pretty m and many more artists out there. On the actual day of the inauguration, they will have the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and some other Radio City Rocketeers, of course, if you know about them. Some of them decided that they were not going to perform at the inauguration, which, of course, they have the right to do so. Right. So this event will start, the inauguration will start at 930. There will be opening remarks at 1130 a.m. And the... Uh, of course, the national anthem will be sung by the Americans Got Talent finalist Jackie Evancho. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so let me ask you um, kind of a, a broad question. But there's there's a lot of controversy, of course, fall, um, involved with Trump and his inauguration and his presidency. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on the controversy that surrounds that? Well, when it comes to any type of controversy. Your opinions and your thoughts are usually not your own or really based upon what you decide and what not to do. I follow a lot of conservative websites and a lot of stuff on Instagram where there's a lot of fake reports about seeing and linking nudity online, which of course was not true, but that's based on what you see. And there's a lot of people who are in the comment section who are like, oh my gosh, this is why I don't like CNN. This is why it's fake news. And that also is done by the left. A lot of people who like Bernie, who like Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, they will see a lot of stuff, especially like when um, the burning, the church that was burned down, the National Black Church, 
they said it was a Trump supporter because there was, of course, a Nazi flag right on the side and Trump rules and stuff like that. Finds out it was a black person who was actually a member of the congregation there. Also about um, another story that was broadcast a lot, especially on CNN, when they were talking about a Muslim woman had her job snatched off by a Trump supporter. Turns out that happened to be fake as well. And a lot of stuff about, especially from Hollywood, like Meryl Shrepp coming out saying that Donald Trump makes fun of disabled children. This is not true at all. Or the disabled reporter. This whole, uh, he does that all the time, especially if you've seen any of his previous speeches, especially when we talk about Ted Cruz. So I understand why the left tries to make it seem as though this was the first time and the only time that he ever did something like that. So, of course, I have problems with that. But of course, you know, there, of course, there will always be stigma surrounding Donald Trump, especially when it comes to his well known Twitter account. I believe that Donald Trump, of course, does say some pretty stupid stuff, but a lot of people do. So I don't want to act like just because he's to become the president that he's not above saying stupid stuff. People are going to say stupid stuff. I don't care about more about what you say. I care about the actions that you take. So unless he's actually, unless he actually does something bad, like, you know, put people in prison camps or stuff like that, I'm not going to say anything bad about him. With that being said, uh, his throughout his campaign, yes, you mentioned that you don't care about what people say, but these actions have led to some violent things. You've mentioned some as not being true. Um, however, there was a student here on campus wearing a build that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, blank wall, mm -hmm. going into Hispanic students' faces, telling them to go home would you say that he needs to be held accountable for his words? Absolutely not. It makes no sense to say that. For example, um, the four black kids in Chicago decided to kidnap and torture a Trump supporter who had autism. Do we sit there and say Hillary Clinton is responsible for that? She should be deemed accountable was she, for that. Was, were, were they wearing any shirts with a phrase from Hillary Clinton? No, no but not. if you sit there and constantly say F Donald Trump, F white people, Our constantly at the to school their face. War, uh, and I say that clearly, person is responsible for that person's actions and only that person's mm -hmm. actions. Well, maybe if our current president elect didn't say those inflammatory words and made it seem as if it's okay, that wouldn't be happening. Our these campus. words are not. I love how you're making it seem as though these words are something that has never been said before in the history of America. <laughs> People will have these views. People will do whatever they feel like doing. I listen to a lot of rap music, but I don't sit there and go sell drugs and stuff like that just because they're saying to do so. And I don't condone that either. I, I don't, don't, I don't condone, I don't condone the person drugs. doing that. And I don't like that the person did it. He should never did that. But I'm not going to sit there and say, this is happening because of Donald Trump. Because yes. even if Hillary Clinton was to win and this person still did it, would it still be Donald Trump's They problem? wouldn't. You want to know why they did that? Why? Because they felt that Donald Trump was that powerful enough to say those words. And now that because he's in office, he will then build a wall and send Hispanic students back to Mexico. And these students, I'm pretty sure the school, well, I think we're in the works now of accepting DACA students. They're well American citizens as much as he is. And who's to say what um, an American is? Donald Trump is not even American. So for him to say that an immigrant family who came here how many years ago, who built this country, this country was built on immigrants. Of course. So for him to say that he's going to send Mexicans or whomever back to their country, this is not anyone's land, might I add. So yes, he should be held accountable for his words not just actions. So you believe that what someone says is should be responsible yes. for what someone else says? And I will be held accountable for whatever words I say as well. Well, That's how allow that person to be accountable for what they say and not have anything else. Okay, well, uh, great discussion. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Aaron. It was a pleasure to have you, and um, you're... you're uh, I still got more to say. Okay, you still got more to <laughs> say. still got more to say. Well, last thoughts on the inauguration, or, or what is it? Well, of course, after um, the national anthem, Pence and then Trump will be sworn in, take the oath of office using the Lincoln Bible, and... In, in according to all the other president inaugurations, Donald Trump will be the most expensive, costing about 100 to $200 million in comparison, which is more than twice as much the cost of Barack Obama's $45 million inauguration back in 2012. Now, following that weekend, so this Saturday, um, there will be a presidential ball, the deplorable ball. There will also be a women's march on Washington that will happen on Saturday at 10 a.m. Janelle Mo 
Monet plus to be performing there. And she's also one of the people that's over there. So I'm definitely be looking into watching that. I do like Janelle Monet. Um, now, of course, you know, there's but there's go as well. There's going to be protests. You know, there's people who say, well, he's not my president. In several cities. There is, yeah. There, of course, they say 32 states were going to be people who could be Atlanta protesting. And, of course, there's going to be some Democrats who are deciding to boycott. You know, what you said, um, Senator Lewis decided that he's not going to do it. But now, there are, whether I agree with you or not, whether you should boycott or protest, you do have the right to do so. And I will fight to the death or to the end of my life for people to be able to say what they want to be said. To which your current president. Our current president of course. plans on revoking those. Yeah, but whether you like him or you don't, which of course, <laughs> as from what I've known, there's not much of an in between when it comes to Donald Trump. Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. Yes, and I pray that he does well. Uh, yes, uh, as as do we all. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you, Thank Aaron. You for me. College happens. You're just gonna watch one more episode. Okay, one more. Or another. It's okay. It's not due until 11.59 p.m. Challenge accepted. Chegg Study will help you get your assignments done faster, no matter what's distracting you. Over 90% of students who use Chegg Study finish their homework faster and get better grades. We will now get into our Grizzly of the Week. This week, we are recognizing Anna Echeverry. We usually have our Grizzly of the Week appear on the show. However, Ms. Echeverry is away studying abroad, so we will tell you about her activities on and off campus leading up to her nomination. Anna is a business major with a minor in English. Anna has been a youth group coordinator at her church for the past five years, encouraging teens to create a relationship with God, stay in school, stay away from drugs, and learn to live a balanced life. Anna has also been volunteering with Ser Familia for over 10 years. Ser Familia offers programs that help Latino children, youth, and adults thrive and become constructive members of their communities. Anna volunteers with their youth program where, she's, where she helps teens improve their family lives by teaching them everyday skills to learn how to navigate through life's difficult choices. Aside from volunteering with teenagers, Anna serves as a mentor to many of her younger friends that are starting college. She says, this is a stressful time for many people. I wish that I had someone that would tell me how to steer through my classes and that it was going to be okay. Anna's motivation is her parents. They left their professional careers in Colombia to come to the United States to make her life possible. We hope you enjoy your trip, Anna, and congratulations. That's it for Grizzly News this week. Join us next week, and as always, keep, keep growling, growling, Grizzlies! grizzlies.